protecting Morgan Territory as a park was an idea sparked by Hewlett Hornbeck, Manfred Lindner, and the Contra Costa Park Council. Hornbeck started out as an attorney working for a bond charity firm in San Francisco. He was also a member of the Contra Costa Park Council and quickly rose to become its highly effective president. At age 46, though, his life changed dramatically. He found he had melanoma. A surgeon removed the cancer and estimated he had five years to live. Hornbeck began to think about how he wanted to spend his remaining time. He liked his day job well enough, but he also loved the outdoors. In 1965, he applied for a job at the East Bay Regional Park District. He hoped to serve under a man who later became head of California State Parks and the National Park Service, William Penn Mott. They say William Penn Mott had an idea a minute, and one of his ideas was, Hewlett, I need you to be my first acquisition person, my first acquisition chief. Hewlett said, well, I've had cancer. I don't know how long I have to live. And, and William Penn Mott said, you look plenty healthy to me. Hewlett went on to create 25 of the regional parks, starting with Briones, um, going not very far on to, to Diablo Foothills, Black Diamond Mines, Morgan Territory here. It was one of those golden eras of the park district. Turns out Hornbeck far outlived his doctor's prediction. He stayed at the park district for 20 years. He wanted to protect as much land as he could before developers came too close because as he said in his oral history, when the bulldozer's looking over the hill, it's too late. He lived to be 93. Nuclear chemist Manfred Lindner got to know Hewlett Hornbeck as a member of the Contra Costa Park Council, which had successfully pushed to establish Las Trompas Regional Park near Danville. After that big win, Lindner started to investigate a ridgetop ranch in the hills above Livermore. It was the middle of April. The wildflowers were at their peak. Gold fields, as far as you could see. It was really spectacular. As he had with the Las Trompas project, Lindner built a scale model of his proposed park. He took photos and showed them to the East Bay Regional Park District Board. He led hikes that attracted as many as 70 people. And he got Hornbeck out to see the place, too. Hewlett would talk about coming out here with Manny, and they'd be hiking along, and every once in a while, Manny would just have to sit down because he was so overcome by emotion, by the incredible beauty here, that he just couldn't speak and he couldn't continue walking. And then he eventually he'd get a hold of himself and they would continue. Just he and I went out there one lovely day in April about 40 years ago and we walked down a path that led to Marsh Creek and as we walked down there you could hear water rushing and it led to a waterfall and I was of course hoping he would be interested in the area he wouldn't ever tell me that he was but I could tell when we stopped and listened to that waterfall that I thought maybe that turned him on. <laughs> and apparently it did. In 1975, the Park District purchased that ridgetop ranch. A year later, they bought a second piece of land, both for only about $400 an acre. Their outpost was small, just over two square miles, and not yet open to the public. But it would blossom into one of the most wild and scenic parks in the district. When we made this guide in 2019, Linder was just about to celebrate his 100th birthday. How do you feel about what you accomplished? I'm very happy with it. I'm very proud of it. I don't go around tooting my horn. I, the, the horn toots itself. 